All right, everybody. So you want to know what a good fight that was? Either the champ or the, or the uh, challenger will be here. They're both. Jones is already at the hospital, and they're taking Gustafsson right now to the hospital. That's how good that fight was. I don't think we've ever had that happen. We usually have one or the other go. They're both going. Uh, the attendance tonight was 15,504. The uh, gate was 1.9 million, which was exactly what we did last time we were here. Fight of the night goes to Jones and Gustafsson. Knockout of the night goes to Hannah Burrell. Uh And submission of the night goes to Mitch uh, uh, Gagnon. So $50,000 each for those guys. Congratulations to the winners. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kev. Dana, I guess I'm going to ask uh, the guys this, but question about a rematch, number one. Uh, you know, since it was such a great fight, you've done, you said you don't like instant rematches in the past, but you No, what I said is I don't like calling them before they, you know, oh yeah, when's it going to be a rematch? You wait and see how the fight goes. But you saw this now. Yeah. Who doesn't want to see this rematch? You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you agree with the scoring? Um, uh, to be honest with you, I, I got so caught up in the fight and people were yelling at me and stuff, and I was yelling back at people, and, and I honestly didn't score the fight. When I was leaving the arena, people were saying, I had it three to two for Gustafsson. Other people were saying three to Jones. And then I talked to Mark Ratner, and Mark Ratner said he had it even going into the fourth round, and uh, gave the, I mean, uh, in the fifth round, and gave the fight to Jones. Um, you know, when you see Jones do what he did, I mean, no matter how you scored it, you know, Jones was behind and, and came back, and his wrestling was neutralized, and yet he still found a way to win the fight. What do you think that says about him? And then secondly, the fact that Alex was able to, you know, here's John Jones, one of the great wrestlers in the sport, and yeah. he's able to neutralize him and actually gets the first takedown on him. What do you think it says about those two? The promotion of this fight was about height and reach. Ariel Hawani threw every one of you under the bus and said you guys all said that was goofy, but he said it was great, okay, of course. Um, this fight was all about the height and reach. You know, John Jones has been fighting guys, uh, you know, that, that were smaller than him, shorter than him, and he has that style where he keeps people on the outside. He couldn't keep Gustafsson on the outside. And what I didn't see coming, which I expected that, I expected that to happen, um, that, 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 that Gustafsson would be really good on his feet, keep him on the outside and, and be faster than him and pick him apart. What I didn't see coming was the wrestling side. I thought that John Jones would be able to get him down, get that top position, ground and pound. Maybe Gustafsson would get back up. In a million years, I didn't think Gustafsson would take Jones down and Jones would never take him down. So, you know, one of the exciting things about this sport is things never go the way you expect it to go. And, and, uh, tonight was one of those nights, and, and, I, and I believe that this is one of those fights where you're going to have people divided and saying that, that Gustafsson got screwed tonight, and other people thinking that Jones won, and, and it was the right decision, but it was close. So I don't know if I answered your question, Kevin, but I tried. Uh, David from the Hammer MMA, uh, if Alexander gets the next title shot, what does that do? With I didn't say we're going to do the rematch. I said I'd like to do the rematch. I mean, it makes sense. I'd like it. You know, I still got to, first of all, with a fight like this, you got to go home, you know, let things play out. John Jones isn't going to want to hear the word fight for two, three weeks. I guarantee you that. Um, so, so we wait, you know, we wait and we see what happens. And, uh, you know, maybe it is Glover, maybe it's a rematch, I don't know. As far as the main event goes, I mean, everyone here was talking about it afterwards. Where do you rank it as far as the greatest fights in not only UFC history, but mixed martial arts history? Yeah, I mean, it was a great fight. And again, it was one of those exciting, great fights because it's what nobody expected. Things happen that you did not expect to happen. And when that does, it freaks you out and you go crazy. And th that's why I, I lost score. I stopped scoring a fight. And, I mean, the first, you didn't have to score the first round. Second round was, you know, whatever. And then I sort of lost it after there because people were yelling and crazy. And, you know, this is one of those fights tonight that you remember why you're a fight fan and why you love going to fight so much. And, when, when, a, when a round ends and the whole place is on their feet with a standing ovation, you know, and they did that for all five rounds tonight. It was just, it was amazing. I love being a part of things like this, you know? It's, it's so fun. Dana, obviously understandable why both those guys had to go to the hospital, but are there any initial reports on exactly what the concerns were, why they were transported? Well, I, I mean, you could tell in the last round, both of those guys were fighting on pure heart. Both fighting, you know, Gustafsson had never been five rounds before, and he got hurt bad with those elbows in the fourth round, um, got hit with some stuff in the fifth round. John Jones was busted up, 
and, and, uh, and kept moving forward, you know, pleaded with the doctor not to stop at the fifth, and uh, they, they were, you know, the, not that I can talk to this either, but, you know, I, I believe that this is one of those fights where both guys felt like they were going to die. You feel like you're going to, I don't know if I can continue, I don't know if I can keep doing this, you know, I don't know if I got one more round in me. If they even knew what round it was, one of those kind of fights. And, uh, you know, it's why you gotta, you gotta respect what happened here tonight. A lot, so of, these, a lot of people were talking about that uh, Jones coming in just didn't have a rival. He, did, he didn't have a guy that had challenged him. He sort of plowed through just about everybody he met. But obviously he got a fight tonight. I wondered how you thought of Jones, like how he rose to the occasion when he knew he was getting into some trouble. So true, man. I, I know there's a lot of people that, that don't like Jones and boo him or whatever the reason is. Um, everybody has a, 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 a different weird reason on why they're not a fan of Jones. He, but I don't care if you like him or don't like him. You got to respect him, man. And what he's been able to accomplish, it's like even tonight breaking the record for most title defenses, you know, and it's going to sound like I'm taking a shot at the dummy, but I'm not. Um, he went through murderer's row. Jones did. Jones went through the, the, amount, the opposition that, that Jones went through to win that title and defend that title does not even compare to, to the record that he broke tonight, you know? And, you know, the heart that he displayed tonight, the chin, this guy's got heart, chin, I mean, he's got it all to, to, to get busted up in those first two rounds and then come on the way that he did at, at the end of the fight. He's, he's a special fighter, man. He's a special, he's a special fighter. Just one quick one uh, for Dana as well. There was uh, quite a contingent of Swedish fans here. Is there any, any metrics or any uh, sense of just how big this fight was in Sweden with, with Alexander in the main event? <laughs> When it ended, I, when, it, when it gave the decision, I said they're probably rioting in the streets in Sweden right now. Um, I don't know how big it was there, but I'm, I'm sure it was huge. Yeah. Every time we go over to Sweden, the events are big, you know, and Gustafsson is usually on the card, and I'm sure it was crazy there. MMAviking.com, yeah. uh, question for Dana. After Jones was announced the winner, uh, you went over and had a lengthy discussion with uh, Alexander's coaches. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about your exchange there? Yeah, so I was telling them, you know, obviously this sucks. You didn't win the belt. You're not bringing it back to Sweden like you had planned. But you lose nothing in this fight. Your stock is through the roof after this fight. This is one of those fights when you come out and do what you did tonight that, you know, everybody knows your name tomorrow. People are like, John Jones is fighting who? Monday they'll be saying, holy shit, John, you know, Gustafsson is awesome. We want to see the rematch or whatever it's going to be. We think he won. It's one of those unfortunate things where the, the, you know, they're all hurting and they wanted that belt, but their stock went through the roof tonight. In the case of a rematch between John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson, what are the odds of it being in Sweden or in Europe? What, what are the what? The, the odds or the chances of a rematch being in Sweden or in Europe? I don't know. You know, like I said, we, we don't know. we got to wait a few weeks and see how this thing plays out and what we want to do. But, I mean, it, it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be like we couldn't do it in Sweden. It would be pretty great to do the fight there. I love it there. And, uh, but Vegas is never bad either. So Vegas, I'm sure. Um, or, or if the timing went right on this fight, it could be a Super Bowl fight too. Dana, not to, not to press too much on this potential rematch, there's a lot of variables. But ultimately, like you said, everybody probably wants to see it again. Does right. it just basically come down to health, how these guys come out of the yeah. fight? Yeah, we got to see how these guys both feel, what's wrong, if anything's wrong with them, you know. Um, and, uh, and then go from there. Like I said, when you see two guys get busted up like they did tonight, they don't even want to talk about fighting for a few weeks. You know, it's the last thing you want to talk about. You got to let them heal up, go home, spend some time with their family, and start to get that itch again. And then, then they'll be ready to talk. So if it plays out the way you, you want to see it, it's, it's the rematch. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You guys gonna write? Yeah, Dan said yeah. he wants the rematch. That's what he. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying yes, people probably want to see it. It would make sense. Maybe it could happen, but not even close. I'm not in any way remotely saying that's next. There was a sense tonight with this fight between John Jones and Alex Gustafsson that um, we were looking at rivals for Jones before, and the guy really emerged tonight as a man who really believed he could beat John Jones when he was in there. Do you think this is the beginning, like other great eras between great fighters, this could be the beginning of an epic rivalry between these two men in the light heavyweight? No doubt about it. I mean, when you have a fight like this, yeah. And then do you think there's also a sense, given, given that we're coming up to the 20th anniversary of, of the organization, your fight organization, that 
this was another Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonnell moment. That it was, it was one of those kind of fights, one of those nights that people will look back and say, "Wow, yeah, I can't believe I was there, but I was." It was definitely fight of the night. It's definitely up for fight of the year, and uh, it's one of the best fights people have seen in a long time, especially a title fight that goes five rounds. And would you consider putting this fight on in Sweden? if they had a rematch in a stadium, because it could be that big. They asked me that a million times tonight, I just don't know. I don't know. Dana, what do you think uh, John's performance has come back tonight that does for uh, his legacy? Uh, uh, it, it, it adds to his reputation, but in a way also it, it makes him look human. Right. Uh, no, he definitely looked human tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, he looked human tonight, but it's, it, it takes a superhuman on both sides to do what they did tonight for five rounds, just pounding each other and to keep going. And to, you know, the doctor wants to stop the fight. Jones pleads him not to stop the fight. He wants his fifth round, and you know, and go out there and perform the way that he did, and then literally walk straight out of the octagon and into an ambulance. Pretty impressive. I'll take two more questions. Go ahead, Kev. We weren't able to hear what was going on in the corner. Was the doctor saying actually it was? Could you hear? I didn't hear it either. Okay. Where I was sitting, people were going crazy, you know, and so was I, and everybody was jumping up and down and yelling. I just lost all sense of what was going on over there. Okay. And then the other question is, you know, uh, the sense of John has always been that he's been so much more talented than guys, but now tonight, maybe, do you think that he put? and to the rest that he's not a tough guy, that you know, it, John Jones may be one of the toughest guys out there, as well as one of the most talented. Anybody who would say otherwise about the guy is just some, uh, you know, you're just a hater. You're just, you're, just, you're just looking for reasons to not like the guy. John Jones has displayed nothing but heart, toughness, skill, you know, an unbelievable talent since the day he walked into the UFC. What he, what he did to, like I said, this is a guy, again, not getting credit for what he's accomplished, who had walked through murderer's row to get that belt and continued through those same types of people in every defense of the title. Nobody has ever, in the, in the, in the history of the heavyweight champ, uh, championship, light heavyweight championship, nobody's ever faced the opponents. Not even, not, not Tito, not Chuck Liddell, nobody. To, to follow up one last question, you know, you made fun of the height, reach, uh, talk from the media and everything, but, you know, he fought a guy like that before. He fought Bonner, and, he, you know, Bonner was as tall as he was and, and had that it kind of reach, and he had no trouble. Was it, in your opinion, something just Alex was just a cut above in, in terms of fighting or, you know... I love Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner is one of the guys who helped us get here. To compare Stefan Bonner to Alex Gustafson is... Not right. It's just not right. 